And this is all in this Virgo phase. And I ended up going into this, saying I want to go in. So they set up this silence room for me again. And I went into it. And this time I spent, I went in, I spent three months alone. I just, I was alone. I was just chanting. And at the end, I, I, when I came out, I was, I'd lost, I was about 130. I came out, I was weighing 65 pounds. My skin was hanging on my bones. I looked like I was going to die. I probably was close to it. But I felt great because I did this. I felt great for being alone. I felt, yeah, I felt really together. And I wanted to go m more into the room, but they said, you're too skinny. You've got to fatten up. You can't go in yet. So they made me stay out for a month or so and fatten me up. And But I spent that 98 days in solitude. I'm, wait, this is still, I'm still within the degree of the sun hitting Pluto and Mercury, but it's moving out of that. But in this Virgo phase, it, it changed. So after the three after the three months I came out, and I wanted to go further into the in, do more meditation, but somebody did an article and there, there's a little bit of tension of me being there, and a big issue came up. But what's a white guy from America going into this in an inside Indian thing? And so uh, they came disturbing and they sent me to um, this is a picture of me after the I was pretty skinny. <laughs> this is a little like I was fattening up here, um, but. Um, they sent me on a train across India to go to another room to be set up that was fixed up for me in Kumbakonam in southern India. So then I went into this room in southern India, and just as I did in this period, just I went into this room for the into a, one of these rooms for the third time. I, I went into this room and I stayed in it. I thought I'd spend six months, but I ended up spending 13 months in this room alone, in darkness, just chanting, meditating without seeing anybody. So this was. As I went into the room, it's it switched from the size from the Virgo phase of being self-critical to really just going into my silence in the cave in the sat the Capricorn thing with Scorpio, sat, uh, Scorpio, the cap the pentan changed from Sagittarius and the traveling to the Capricorn to the Sirius, the discipline, the, the strength, and it changed from Virgo to the Libra on the pentan level. So the, the Libra was like the chanting, getting into the chanting, I think the Venus of it, but. The Capricorn really was the discipline and the visions being alone and being isolated, being confined. And there's a little room and just had a toilet attached to it. So you had your facilities and you could be alone and meditate. And they had a double door where they put food in, close it, and you could take food. So you could get the food, but you could meditate and be alone, like in a cave, without having all the, the dirt and the animal. Like there were still things that come in. There were still bugs and scorpions and not scorpions. Um, tarantulas and, and, and lizards and things that would get into the room. But anyways, you were not supposed to be attention because you're supposed to be meditating, right? And chanting. <laughs> and the mosquitoes, you're trying to be ignore them when you're the only piece of meat in the room. So um, these were some of the tests of being alone. But I was chanting through this whole time. This whole 13 months that I was in this in this room in solitude, it was the time that the progressed sun was conjuncting my Mars. It's not anything I would ever submit a puzzle on my life. How can I? Like, I went for the progress on right? You think you're doing things really well. I really was. I went to around the world. I was doing something. I had experiences in something of very Scorpio Capricorn nature. I really did it. But it was not what I ever would have predicted for a sun conjunct Mars. But really, it was the most spiritual experiences of my life. At the end of these, I had visions that or about astrology and music, and I'm still living in those visions today, 50 years later. So this is a, a picture of me. There is a bigger story about this. When I came, um, I had gone back to India in the 90s, 30 years later, and went back in this room again. But um, a friend of mine said, you got to talk about this. So he brought a video and talked. So I have some videos talking about my time in India. and. Um, they're on the website of harryomharryom.com, www.harryomharryom.com. So if, you, if you're at all interested, you can go find that deeper. But where it is, it's just, I'm just showing how it shifted across, for the time it shifted across the, on the pentaton level, it was still, it's all still going through the Scorpio in my third house of learning, of studying, of the depth of trying to know deeper things. And when it went from, it's, by the time it got to the solstice of, Sagittarius, I'd gone into the room to begin with just before the, at the end of the Sagittarius Pentan. By the time I was just getting to about 15 degrees where it's at the, the solstice of the Pentan, I was in the room and then 
the rest of the time, when I spent a long time in the room, that was the capital where I really became established as my discipline and what I could do, which was a lot of nothing and sitting still, being chanted, being alone. Those were the things I could do. But I see the Libra phase inside it. Aside from being a Libra, I see it was the chanting. And during this time period, I remember you get alone. And when you're alone, your thoughts go over. You're thinking about everything, about how to get out, whatever. So suddenly you're going over all the thoughts in your life, everything that's gone on, and you go through your whole life. Suddenly you do that two or three times. You get a little tired. Then you start watching the emotions behind you. You're feeling, you care for someone. Where were they? You're feeling that, and that emotions come up, and then it fades up. They come up, and then you go through all the emotional highlights of your life. You go through that three or four times over a number of months, and eventually those get kind of, you get tired of going through that. You've been through that so many times. And then you start listening to the silence even more. So there was an emotional quality of detachment that was, it's, I mean, really, it was a plutonian thing because I was staying, I was, at, I was alone, I was apart from being in relationships, the Pluto not being in relationships. But there was in, in this inner format trying to establish a relationship to God, I guess, with color to, and, um, and in that, they cut, being ended up traveling around the world, feeling like I belong here, I belong here. I, I ended up, the Saj pulled me away to India, and then India got me the discipline to start working on things. That I stopped traveling, just being alone, not meaning to anyone else, just not living in anyone else. It was just stopped the cycle. So it really was a significant turning point. My main point is showing this, not just. The, not the, but it, it's so many changes that happened to me at that time, but you, you, I can see them in my impressions. They show up in the hexagrams as well, but which we'll be going to the hexagram study of this next week. But um, I could have just taken today and worked on where things were today and talked about it and done it, but I thought this is a bit more dramatic. This is a picture of me. Someone took a picture of me the day I came out. After 13 months being alone, I thought I spent six months in this room. And it turns out it was 13 months when I was in there when I came out. And I didn't know because I'm used to four seasons there. They had wet and dry, and I wasn't in touch with what the seasons were. So, um, yeah, so I was just ha hardly in my body, mostly in another world. And then just as, as I'm about to come out of the room, the day I came out of the room was the same day Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon. It's just funny coincidences. My Neil Armstrong is my brother's name also. But it was just a lot of coincidence at that moment. This that then it changed. See, that was the change from going from the Scorpio Capricorn Libra to Scorpio Capricorn Scorpio. This intensity that I came out. Discipline intense. You know, and it was on group for now it's so July twentieth, I think it was uh, 20th or 23rd, I forget, whatever day Neil Armstrong went on, it was that day. And um, I think it was the 20th of that year. And so I came out of the room and then I, I went around India and I met, around southern India, I met certain spiritual masses. I met the Pondicherry Mother at Oroville. And there was another lady, Diana, who was a Tibetan monk. Tibetan monk, she lived in the mountains in Tibet for 20, 30 years. And she'd come down to be visiting the monetary mother in the ashram here where Aurobindo, Aurobindo was there, but he had died. But she went out of her way, even though she was not dying, to take me on a trip for a day. We went in, into across the desert into Tirvana Malay. I met the desert Swami, a forest Swami. I met, went to the Ravana ashram. I had all these mystical meetups. And then I came back to Pondicherry and then, but. I couldn't understand. I felt I had something further to go. So there was some confusion. I didn't know why, where I was going next. So I, after that, I went back to the solitude room again. So this is still the Scorpio cover. Something was missing. And I had to go back into the room. So I went back into the solitude room. And this time was for about, 50, for about 60, I think it was, I don't know how many, 50, 60 days, something like that. But when I went in there, all of a sudden, like up to then, I was just living in the moment, living in the moment. When I went back in this last time, well, not the last time, but that time, I had um, instantly, I woke up to all the feelings I'd been in there before. It was like this gong went off, and I walked into the room, and boom, I was picking up where I left off. I was no longer, I was back in the dream, and it was real. But um, shortly after that, I started having visions. 
and the visions kept coming and I, I couldn't turn off my mind. I would lie down, I could be relaxing, but my consciousness was widely following all the connections was to astrology, to music, to different things. It was just, uh, I don't know how to express it otherwise, but I didn't sleep for 50 days then. And um, then I came out and I realized I couldn't stay where I was. I was meant to, it was harder to stay in the room than to get out of the room than to stay in. I could stay in forever. And then I realized I had to come out. So I came out and then I came back from India and I got back to Montreal, stayed at my mom's for one month, and I couldn't last at her place any longer. But funny, the day I came back and came to her place, she'd met the man she was going to her second husband to be. She met him that day, was on her first date with him that day. They came back. So that was funny little timings. I took a job to work at Dawson College, working on the printing press for six months to pay off the fare from India, which my mother paid. Really, I called my mom. I sent a letter saying, will you pay for the fare? She said, no, go back the way you come. You came. And by then, Pakistan and India were fighting. I couldn't get back that way anyways. Didn't have any money. And so I wrote the consulate, and they said, they'll, have, they'll see if they can help me. Made a story up and lied to my mom, saying, he's starving in South India. If you don't pick it off your ass and get to go now, pay later, take it or else. So she did, and I got back. And then I worked six months to pay it off. So that was... Basically, this was going through Scorpio, Capricorn, Scorpio phases. Really, I wasn't trying to travel. I had too much experience. I'm trying to get the center of where I did travel back to Canada, but I, it was um, not the space. Yeah, that was, yeah. So this, then I came back. Okay, I put a little bit more on here. Okay, so, okay. So when it went back, where are we, Scorpio? It went into the Capricorn Sag phase. Okay. In the Capricorn, I came back. I finished paying off the debt. I, I went. I decided to travel again, so I hitchhiked and I traveled. I took a bus and I traveled out to the West Coast to Vancouver, down to San Francisco again. I was in San Francisco trying to see old friends. Nobody was there. It was a total desert compared to where it used to be. But I went on a 37-day water fast. I didn't eat anything, just water for 37 days in San Francisco. And shortly after that, I met a Kaylin Cropper who was first astrologer to do my horoscope. He did my horoscope and I realized my vision was astrological and that my excellency, you mean they're supposed to be like this? I mean, and I got fascinated with astrology. He gave me a book, Astrology was by Jane Roger, and it lit up from there. I just couldn't get enough astrology. I just lived in astrology and got inspired by astrology from this point on with this is the Sagittarius phase coming through the Capricorn. But I had the long hair and beard. I was traveling around. Um, 